the models that we're using were printed on a 3D printer. So uh, this is uh, printed on a, a, a resin type 3D printer, but a FDM printer would be fine. Uh, you just have to make sure, that especially the sides are smooth. So you may have to, you know, if it's ABS or PLA, you'll have to fill it a little bit. But uh, we've got two different kinds of parts, and these are parts for the Tron XY printer. We're going to replace the the uh, uh, laser cut parts with it, with some cast aluminum parts. Anyway, uh, something I want to mention on these: make sure, or you know, if you can, put a little bit of a taper on here, a little bit of a of a re relief, so that when you remove the part, it'll it'll remove a little easier, or remove the model from the sand, it'll come out a little easier. I use about a two degree taper. So I'm going to try to lay these out and so get all all in one pour. So this is uh, what I'm going to use for for the to bring the, the metal in, the molten metal in. So I need to lay these out in such a way that when I put my flask on here, and this is the way it goes. Pretty good. It's kind of close here on the sides. But uh, this will be our, our sprue riser, I guess you could call it. And uh, now we have to start putting, uh, oh, you know First of all, we, we need to put a little bit of uh, talc, talcum powder on here. I'll make sure all those parts are really well covered, especially on their sides. I'm going to pull it out of there for a second. You need to be a little careful with the talc because you don't want it to you don't want to lose some of your detail because it gets filled with talcum powder. And I'm going to use this little blower. I'm going to blow away some of the excess. And get those positioned properly. start putting in the sand. I think the sand, I, to get going here, I'm going to have to use some sifted material. So, so you can do that by just pushing this material through the strainer. And it quickly converts it from lumpy Petrobond into a uh, very fine, fluffy almost material. on there. Be very careful so sparks don't move on me. Once I get the first layer of Petrobon on here and pack down a bit, it'll hold all the parts in place. That won't be so, so much of a problem.
So, there we are. There's the drag that's all, all uh, rammed tight. Okay. All right, so this is the, the view of the center of our of our flask. You see those two parts. I'm going to put a little bit of talc on here to help the two halves separate easily. I don't want them to stick together. Now I'll put the second half on, which is actually the top. And let's see. I think I had it on. Oh, yeah, there we are. Okay. Together nice and tight. Now we'll start filling this. And again, I'll, I'll sift the material that I start off with so I have a much better contact with the lower surface. Works pretty good. Just take a clump and rub it against the inside of the screen here. So now essentially at this point we have a completed mold. We just now we need to figure out some way of getting the metal into the mold. That'll be the next step. So uh, let me bring this up a bit. Try to keep things as clean as possible because if you have any sand getting into the mold cavity, um, it will produce vo voids in your casting. And your casting won't come out as, as nice as it should. So we want to keep things pretty tidy, or as tidy as you can with this type of material. All righty. So now, I'm going to separate the mold halves. Now the tricky part, I'm going to take the top off. And we've got our parts here. And I'm going to cut some sp sprue lines. the metal will flow. Again, I'm going to pack these down a little bit because 
you don't want to eat loose grains of sand to get into the old cavities. Now here's the tricky part, we have to remove these models. The vibration helps loosen up the sand around. I should have more of a draft angle on these than I have. All right. So now we've got our spruce. We, we still need a way to get the metal into the mold. So take a look at this. We can kind of see. Careful that. You can see where those are located. So what I'm going to do is, is take this thing and put it right through where our screw lines will be. And a little luck, we got that all in the right place. Let's see. Let pack that a little bit doesn't fall loose. Looks good from this angle. Alright, we could pour metal into this little hole here. That'd be fine, except that it's a little bit better if we could get more height. So I'm going to make, uh, I guess you call it a sprue riser, and I'm going to use this piece of pipe and to give it a funnel shape on the top to make it easier to pour, I'm going to just mold it around this funnel. So I'll set the mold aside real careful, and we'll make this. So I'll just simply turn that upside down and pack it full of pepper bond. I want it fairly tight because Again, you want to pack well enough so that the sand won't come loose. And get into the mold cavities. That's probably pretty good. Shave this off. Oh, And now I'll use this pipe again to to make the hole through. There we go. And I'm gonna. down lightly. If you got a bigger project going on, you might want to mound up some petrol petro bond around this just to make sure it's all the place. Now we're all ready to pour metal. Let's do it. Voice probably sounds a little funny being inside this helmet, but uh, 
I'm going to check the metal. We've had the metal's been out here melting for a while. Got a little bit longer to go. I have to add this some more. But um, as soon as the metal's melted, it should be just a couple minutes here. We'll uh, clean off the top of the metal and then pour our mold. Got fire bricks out here. Helps protect. It it it. it it helps protect things, helps insulate things off the table, and if you happen to spill the metal, it will the fire brick won't flow very fast over the fire bricks. We're on a metal, and you know, you know, it can move pretty fast. So, all right, we're going to pour it 720 degrees, and uh, what I'm going to do right now is remove some of the dross off the top. We don't get a whole lot of dross. We use some fairly clean metal, and because of this, the way this crucible kind of controls the amount of oxygen, so we're reducing atmosphere in there. Now, I'm going to heat for a little bit. Um, I've got the spout oriented at 9 o'clock, my 9 o'clock, so I'm going to be coming over here and pouring it really lightly into there. And I'll pour it until that fills up just about full. So I have plenty of downward pressure to fill the mold. And then the rest of it goes into this little ingot mold over here. So I'll see all set. Ready for the pour? It's hot. And the rest of it goes in there. That was about the right amount, wasn't it? I'll put this back in the oven and turn the, turn the oven off. Now we just have to wait for it to cool. Alright, it's cooled down enough we can break it open. Yeah, and uh, there we go. You know, separate a little bit, but uh, sprues are designed so I can just snap off the parts. And uh, hey, looks pretty good. So this is the result. This is uh, with the, with the uh, uh, casting saw and finished up a little bit, uh, drilled and tapped. This is how the this, this side is tapped, so the other side just drills through. You didn't need a nut. And then down here is the other one. It, uh, again, it's tapped, and I have a nut on there just to lock it. And this little this screw right here can be used to tighten up the thing, press this against the side of, or the end of the, the rail. So it's a nice thing, and it's a uh, Good way to make good sturdy, uh, sturdy parts. You know, much much better than plastic would be. Thanks for watching.